If you ever wanted to become a Pokemon trainer, Valorant just introduced a newest agent that has kinda like Pokemons in it, and it's called Gecko. In this video, I will share some tips and tricks on how to play him efficiently. Welcome to the next episode of Lotus Lab, and right now, we're gonna share some tricks, some tips, some tricks, something that I learned right now by uh, spending three hours in the custom games testing him out. And uh, first, let's break down the, ult uh, the utility that he has. He has a Molly, a kind of like a boom bot. If you play the game, we're going to use a lot of analogy. Uh, and then a flash and essentially a very small Killjoy ultimate that has legs. Or maybe not legs, but like fins. So first one. And this, by the way, this green blob, I think is the most useful piece of utility in his entire kit. And by the way, people are saying, oh, he's broken. No, he's definitely not broken. He's not overpowered. I think he's playable. He's very good for solo queue, so if you're looking for an agent to play in solo queue, I think he's going to be a great choice, and I'll explain why. But on the pro level, I think he becomes weaker once we reach a certain level where players will be very efficient at destroying the utility. Because almost every single piece of the utility that he has, apart from this green blob, which is the molly, can be destroyed. Now, the green blob is a molly that, that kind of works like a combination of an aftershock and a normal molly. It doesn't deal damage until it explodes. So, where you're in, in this zone, it only explodes after this four seconds like uh, timer, essentially. And the damage that it deals in the light green is 150, so lethal range. But in the dark green... Outer Rim, it deals 75. Now, what is even more important is that it covers an absolutely insane radius. This is 10 meters in diameter. Radius? Diameter? I mean, one is 5, the other one is 10, because it's double. But anyway, this is like the huge, the biggest molly that is not an ultimate, essentially. And it's very useful to check in corners, it's very useful to just execute a site, and it's also insanely useful in post-plant. Um, now, what is also very important is that it has a range of a Kildred Nanoswarm or a Viper's molly. Sorry, Viper's orb. So, if you ever want to... If you ever want to train and do lineups with this, it's best if you go into a custom map and as a Viper, because on a, when you play Viper, on the minimap, you're going to see how far away and where the orb will land. So you can do lineups for Nanoswarm and for KO Grenade or for Mosh Spit, so for Gecko's Grenade, uh, with the Viper orb, right? So this is... Uh, this is pretty neat. Um, and it's going to be most likely the best utility to use in every round. It also costs only 250 The entire kit from Gecko is very cheap. It's 550 because one each utility can be used once unless you pick it up. And that's another aspect. The molly is all, all, although it's one use only. You throw it, you forget, it has an effect. right? And what is very important, when people will be playing against you, when they cannot really stand here at all, because... And against an aftershock as a breach, when you aftershock uh, a corner with breach, a person can like tank 60 damage and then swing. With this, no one can ignore it. People have to run out immediately. So it will be better to check corners with this because it will, will require less time. So it's a very efficient tool. Now, let's jump maybe to the signature ability, uh, Dizzy. Dizzy has very cute eyes, but also he's very, very fragile. He only has 20 HP. That means when we're gonna throw it, right? When he's gonna just jump and he's gonna like hover in the in the air and just one bullet from any gun in the game, even the classic, right, will deal enough damage to break it. So the higher rank we go, the easier it will be to destroy it. And it also creates a very loud noise for people to be aware where it is. Now, every ability, apart from the Mosh Pit, can be picked up. It's essentially a, like a like an orb for the ultimates. It's the same timing. It also creates a sound. It's a different sound than capturing the normal orb for the ultimate. Uh, the opponents will be able to hear this sound from around 33 meters, 35 meters. When you pick it up, you get the, uh, you get the ability on a 10-second cooldown. So when you pick up the orb... Uh, the cooldown will be 10 seconds and you will be able to use Dizzy or, um, or Wingman or Thrash again. But the thing is, when you throw it and the global is being spawned, it has a 20 second timer. So you only have 20 seconds to pick it up. And in most cases, please don't. Please don't pick it up because it's another micro objective. The thing is, 
when you play the game and you see the orb ultimates, they are being like, like that's an additional objective of the map to control them. And you can abuse them by, you know, baiting people into taking them and then you swing them and you kill them, right? And many people will fail with Gecko and their own gameplay will be very limited because they will always go to retain the global from the uh, from the utility. So you will essentially kill yourself a lot of times just because you're going to be greedy to pick up this another piece of the utility. Now, the thing is, you'll be able to do that if you have backup or you play more efficiently. I'm going to talk about it in a moment. Now, let's let's choose uh, let's choose also wingman. Wingman is a um, is a utility that has two ways, three ways of using it. One. The most common one will be just a boom bot, essentially, right? So if you if you put it in a straight line, it goes uh, and it hacks a player that is in range of 13 meters. That's when it like, starts walking faster, right? You see that activates and it starts walking faster. That range is 13 meters. And then he claps and stuns the players when the range is 7 meters. So the effect looks like this. Oh, never mind. We have to... Uh, let's go. Okay, we're stunned. And the stun lasts three seconds. So it's not that big of a deal. But it gives you info where someone is standing. You can also pick it up. And it bounces from walls, as you guys can see. And when it activates, by the way, uh, he's going to run for six seconds unless someone will run away from his position. Then it's going to disappear. Um, so you can outrun it. Uh, now, the thing is, uh, I didn't show the effect of the flash, by the way. It's not a normal flash, because you can also, like, it's like a blind. It's not, not a flash, not a blind. It's like a new effect, and you can see the corners of the monitor as well, so you can still, like, turn around and maybe, like, do some lucky flicks and kill people that are doing it. But also, you, can, you cannot turn around from it. As you can see, like, even though I turned around, I'm fully blinded by the, uh, by the ink, right? So... It is a very unique effect, and that's why also it's only 20 HP, so you can easily destroy it. Now, go back. we'll go back to Wingman. Wingman can also plant and defuse the spike, but we're going to talk about it, we're going to go back uh, to a custom map. Now, um, because there's some really neat effects that you can uh, you can do, and, and you should know about the Wingman. Now, very important with Wingman is that it it cannot be stunned. Like, when it's activated, you cannot stun him. Uh, you can only flash him, and then when he's flashed, he will not attack a player unless he started attacking him before he was flashed. Uh, so when he's locking on a player, he's going to do it even though he was fully flashed. And he can be affected by paranoia, but he cannot be affected by Reina Blind. So it's kind of inconsistent when it comes to that. Um, and um, when it comes to defusal and, and planting, when he's planting, when he's on a route to plant then he's essentially cannot be stopped. He's gonna go through a Sage Wall, he's gonna go through a Ultimate from Breach, he's gonna get affected by it in a way that he's gonna get like pushed away, but he's still gonna go and plant. Now the thing is, when he starts planting, he is easy, easy to destroy, because if you move him, he gets in instantly destroyed. So if you use a Breach Ult on a planting Wingman, or a Wingman that is diffusing, then he gets instantly destroyed. If an Astra Pole will be used on a, on a Wingman that is planting or diffusing, it also gets insta-destroyed, and then the spike is out in the open. So, in general, when you're going to play Gecko, please, for the love of God, don't use him only for planting. Like, you can only use him for planting, in my eyes, when you know that you either need more players on site, right, or when you are certain that no one can destroy him. Because the thing is, when you're in a 1v1 clutch, he can be a nice tool for, like, planting this spike and not dying because someone is pushing you while you do the plant, right? So this is where it's useful. But if I ever see someone in ranked that plays Icebox, goes on belt and just presses the button to go onto nest, and then he's, like, surprised that the wingman is destroyed and now they have the spike, I'm just gonna quit. And that's gonna happen a lot. Um, but yeah, we're gonna to go to a custom map and, destroy, uh, and explain that as well. But now when it comes to the ultimate, Fresh has an 8 seconds timer when it comes to the duration. You can extend that by jumping into the last moment. He cannot move backwards, by the way. He can only move forwards and on the left to right. And when you jump, you can also make like a side dash and then check the vision. Now the effect, the main effect of this ultimate is a stun that is similar to Kildry's stun. Essentially... 
I'll show you. I will show you over here. When you're standing in the range, and the range is 5 meters of the explosion, you're gonna get affected by the killjoy, essentially, like dog down, for... It should be 5 seconds, but I feel like it's 6 seconds, actually. And you're not gonna able to, like, uh, essentially move fast and shoot the gun, right? So, when you're moving, it's gonna be, like, very slow, like this. Uh, now, you can use this ultimate twice. When you pick up the global, it's gonna be on the 10 second cooldown, and you're gonna be use it, you'll be able to use it another time in this round. Also, you can cancel the ultimate when you're in it. Like you just press X and it goes out. So you can cancel it fast in case you're gonna you're gonna get pushed. Another thing when it comes to using this ultimate, it's not always wise to um to pick it up again. Because what happens is let's assume I'm in a round. I use the, the ult, I stun two people, right? So then I get two kills, I get two orbs, and I have the ultimate at two out of seven. If I pick up the ultimate orb again, sorry, the fresh orb again to refresh my entire ultimate, then it overrides the orbs that I got after using the first. Man, I, we, we need to show this in a customer because it's hard to understand with me just talking. But it's like, the point is, it's not always... It's not always smart to reuse the ultimate if you have the, a huge advantage in the round already. So, to put that into an example, let's say, let's say we go into, uh, into B-side with my ultimate on Icebox, right? And we push us an entire team. When we go onto the site, I get the stun on two players and we're gonna use uh and we're gonna push the side and it's gonna be a 4v1 right let's do it this way as an example so i'm gonna use the ultimate i'm going onto the side i stun two people oh we don't have the orb one more time we're gonna do an execute it's gonna be successful we have a 4v1 position i got two kills and maybe an orb and now this is on... I'm able to pick up the fresh again. But I picked up the orb, and I say I got one kill. So I'm a 2 out of 7. And we have like 95% chance of winning the round because it's 4v1. So it doesn't make sense to pick up the ultimate again. Because what happens is that after this cooldown is down, after the 10 seconds, it will override the orbs that I already got. And it will end up with me having zero orbs. Because it refreshes the max ultimate. And now if I use the ultimate again... I'm at zero. So if you have a huge advantage, don't reuse it, right? Maybe it's smarter if you gained like a lot of orbs to just keep the orbs and get another ultimate and another round faster than reusing it in a round that you practically already won, right? So uh, this is very important to understand. Now, when it comes to HP, the ultimate has 200 HP, so you cannot destroy it with an operator shot, and it requires 5 bullets from a Vandal, right? And it requires 35 damage per Phantom, so that's uh, 6 bullets from a Phantom to destroy it. So it's not easy to destroy it, it's also very fast, so as I didn't play against Gecko yet, I don't really know how consistent you can be to destroy it as a rifler, you can't do it as an operator, it's gonna be too tough, but as a rifler it might be a challenge to destroy this ultimate. But fortunately for us, the ultimate range is essentially the same range as the as this molly. This is the range of the ultimate explosion, essentially. So, when the Fresh is attacking you, this is the stun range, right? And also remember that Fresh requires line of sight. So, if I'm standing over here and the Fresh goes and explodes over here, even though it's gonna be range of inside of 5 meters radius, it's not going to stun me because I don't have a line of sight or rather Fresh doesn't have a line of sight for me. Also, the wingman. Unfortunately, I, cannot ha I, I don't have an, uh, teammate to, uh, opponent to show you this. But if, I, if an opponent stands in this position where the spike is currently shown, right? If I want to plant it, I have to right-click this. But if there's an opponent here and I'm going to put the wingman, wingman. he's going to go around it and go into kitchen. And I can illustrate that by using him to plant. Look. He is sometimes pretty stupid when it comes to choosing the path. Like, if I'll choose the path to plant over here, 
if I do it from like this position, he's going to go through kitchen. But if I'm going to choose this spot, but I'm going to put him on the ground here, look what happens. Gonna plant spike. He takes a really bad Uber. He's cute though, so I'm not mad. All right. And now he plants. And you cannot stop him when he's planting, by the way. Like, you can... Opponents can destroy him. But you cannot cancel it. And that's very important. Like, you're not... If you pressed it, you're committed. You have to go. Right? And that's... Uh, and that's the problem. He also has 100 HP. So, three bullets for Vandal. Three bullets from a Phantom. Or four bullets from a Classic will destroy him. Or four bullets from a Ghost will destroy him. Right? So... The range of implanting is actually... Once you... Once you uh, choose a spot for the plant, his range doesn't matter. He's going to go there and plant. The, st the same thing is with the diffuse. When you choose for him to diffuse, he's going to go there and start diffusing it. Now, the biggest advantage of Wingman, and I feel like how he should be used in most of the cases, is you should use the Wingman as a diffusal almost every time. Because... You're able to get the diffuse, half diffuse from Wingman almost every time. We tested it out today with the Mollies because when he's diffusing, he's going to be destroyed by Mollies, but he's going to also get destroyed by anything that moves him away from the spike when he's diffusing. But the thing is, when you pop a Molly, when he starts to diffuse, you're going to get a half diffuse every time. So essentially, you pay 300 credits to get a half diffuse on the spike almost every time. And that is insanely useful because if you are watching Lotus Lab a lot or you're watching my stream a lot, you know that one of the biggest things that I explain always on my stream is when you're in a clutch situation, when you need to defuse the spike, when you ping it for the first time, always take the half defuse because it increases your odds of clutching so, so greatly is actually insane. There's an entire Lotus Lab video about it, by the way. So if you're going to find it in the playlist if you want to learn exactly how to, like, abuse um, plant diffusers. So um, that's one thing that I wanted to explain. Now, some tips and tricks that we didn't talk about yet. Um, the Dizzy has a very interesting mechanic that I think is a bug in general. If you use Dizzy in a Viper's Pit, he's ignoring line of sight. So you're able to know where the Viper is. Let's say there's an ultimate here on side you're retaking and you want to get to know where the Viper is. You literally just put it into the Viper's pit and even though Dizzy will not see the Viper because it's near sight, he's going to still shoot at, her, shoot, shoot at her. So you're able to follow the shot from Dizzy into that direction and there's a high chance you're going to kill the Viper. Now this doesn't work on Wingman. Wingman is nearsighted in the ultimate. But in general, it's still very useful. So, um, what else? I think that's the most interesting concepts um, that we have seen. Oh, also, the the Molly is bugged right now and is able to destroy Kill'jaw Lockdown if it's in the light green zone. So, essentially, it deals for some reason more than 150 damage to the Kill'jaw Lockdown in the light green zone. And you can abuse that in ranked till it's fixed, I guess. No one will ban you for that, unfortunately. Uh, but, uh, yeah. It, it sa same happens with other Killjoy's Nanosome. For some reason, it will destroy Killjoy Lockdown with a normal Nanosome from another Killjoy. Um, and my biggest advice, if you're going to start playing Gecko in ranked, right? Use your Wingman and Dizzy in combination. For yourself. You're essentially kind of like a mini duelist, right? Think about it this way. It's very similar to raise. So when you're checking corners, right? Let's assume like I'm attacking a, a confined area. If I'm going to use the wingman first and then I'm going to combine that with my flash, I'm going to be able to attack a space with like essentially two teammates because those will not be ignored. They're going to check corners for you. They're going to blind the opponents. And if this is a confined space, like on Split, for example, it, or like even here on Long B, you're going to be able to pick up those orbs. Typically, I would not recommend picking up those orbs unless you're 100 certain that there's no one next to you. But when you use a lot of utility to check the corners, you're going to be very efficient at attacking. So essentially, Gecko is 
it is an initiator, but when it comes to taking space, he's almost as efficient as a duelist. And when you overcome your opponents with a lot of utility, then you, you, you will find way more success than just using one piece of utility and just, you know, being surprised that it gets easily destroyed. But still, you can use that to your own advantage. Remember, Dizzy has 20 HP, so it's one bullet. Wingman has 100 HP, so it's four bullets, right? From a, from, a, from a pistol or three bullets from a rifle. Now, the thing is, you can use it as a pop flash, but you can also swing it before it happens, right? So, for example, when you're, like, peeking over here, you throw it high, it gets activated, someone shoots at it, and you just swing. You just ignore fully if the blind went off or not. You just use it as a bait for yourself. It's kind of similar way how I use Euro Clown, clone um because i treat it as a as a free teammate as a pocket teammate that i'm able to trade right so i'm baiting out a shot for my opponent and baiting out the info also remember i'm gonna go back to uh to the practice range that dizzy so the flash from uh from gecko is more of an info piece than anything else because it shows you the direction where the players are right for example Sky Flash gives you info if someone got flashed, but you don't get info where they are standing. Dizzy is different. So you can use him to some de degree as an info tool rather than as a flash tool, right? So on some maps, you're going to be able to like throw it over some uh, obstacle. And even though you're not going to be able to follow up on this utility, you will get the direction where the opponents are standing, right? So when someone is like on a scent, for example, standing behind dice, you're able to sh like throw it over, oops, throw it over the wall and still get information where the players are standing, which is pretty neat if you ask me. Wait, can I do it from here? Let me check. Like I can throw it over here and I get the info. It doesn't see them. Oh, that's unfortunate. The point is you will see the direction of the blast. So, even though if you can't follow up Dizzy because the person is behind cover, you're going to get full info that someone is standing in that direction, right? Flash has also le range limit. That's a good question in chat. It's not like Rainer Blind. It's actually like Rainer Blind pre-buff. So, the range of this blast is 43 meters or 45. We weren't ser 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 like certain about exact range, but it's above 40 meters, but below 46 so it's like in between 43 to 45 meters range and it gives you the direction of the opponents so you can either use it as a bait for opponents to destroy so you can peek or you can use it as a directional advantage in case you throw it where opponents will have hard time destroying it but they don't get effect as a flash it just gives you a sense of direction where the opponents will be and yes dizzy spits on every single character that he sees so it doesn't matter how many opponents are on site, you're going to get info on all of them. Also, uh, very important on the utility, uh, on the ultimate, is when you stun people, you get an audio cue. Like, the sound is different. It's like boing. There's no sound here, right? But when you go into the bots, and boom, the gong goes off, right? So it's kind of like similar with Skyflash. You don't need the audio voice. For your character to say it, you can just listen to this sound. Um, if this is one enemy just a bit earlier than another, he will only spit one first one and dies. It, it only activates once. So Dizzy activates once, and after that, he just stops spitting. That's essentially it. Um, anything else? If you wanna, if you wanna aim to be a gecko main, right? Remember, you need intent behind your utility. All of his utility is very weak. And if you have no confidence in taking the space that you gain by using this utility, you're not going to be efficient with this agent. You need to follow up it fast. All of this utility requires fast, fast decision making. So if you check a corner with the molly, you have to be prepped. Someone will insta pick you from that corner if someone is there if you're gonna use wingman right sorry dizzy you're gonna have to be ready to that it's either gonna destroy it with like one bullet and you need to do something to gain advantage from that first bullet like uh, um you know that first bullet destroying your dizzy or you're not gonna gain anything from us from it as well 
Wingman requires a little bit of like of like context of what you want to achieve with it this round. Because if you're gonna put it like very aggressively to check like any corners and you're not gonna retain the, the globe from it, well then as a defender you cannot really defuse. But if you then you should think like maybe I should use Dizzy for the angle check first and then make sure that I would keep Wingman for a retake, right? Or use Dizzy in a different way. For example, um, let's say I'm actually, this is going to be a good example. Let's go to aim, lobby, or split. Or ascent maybe as well, doesn't matter. But the thing is, you can use them at the beginning of the round as a defender to angle check in some open spaces. So let's say I'm playing Gecko on split A as a defender. We can throw him up into the air and get early info from A main. You can do the same on B main, for example, on Ascent, when you're playing on lane on, on, on Ascent. I'll explain to you as in, in an example what I mean exactly. Can you bounce wingman off a wall? Yeah, it's like Boombot. So let's say I'm a defender that starts A side, right? And I'm going to start here. I'm going to be able to like jump up, throw Dizzy. He's going to see the opponents over there. Well, you don't want to avoid him being in this spot. <laughs> yeah, this is something that you want to avoid. But in general, like if I'm going to be here and I'm going to just throw it up, like straight up, like this. He's going to have the vision into A main and he's going to jump down literally on your feet. So you're going to be able to retrieve it and get it in 10 seconds again. But you got the info if someone is in that area. You can do the same, for example, with Boombot, sorry, uh, with, with Dizzy on Ascent, right through window. Or like, throw it up here. And it should have the info as well if there's a push potentially and you can easily retain it. And the small min-max of this utility we're going to give more context when we're going to start playing him in ranked, but I feel like getting the early info from Dizzy is going to be one of the key pieces of utility to make him really worthwhile, you know? So, uh, because again, if you pick up the global back, you can reuse him in 10 seconds. So taking small amount of space with this agent is going to be very important, and I guess that this concludes our uh our first guide on gecko we're gonna go more in depth on gecko and with like examples of to use his utility after we're gonna get myself some games and ranked with him and learn exactly how to use him in the game thank you for watching and see you guys around